All right, so we're going to deal with the sense of taste and smell and how we perceive those things. First, we'll look at smell. Uh, smell is uh, the technical term for smelling is olfaction. And so you have these olfactory receptors. And of course, you'd expect to find them found in the nose. The technical term for taste, by the way, if I forget to say it, it's called gustation. And so those are gustatory receptors. And in fact, before I start talking about the nose, olfaction and gustation, smell and taste are complementary senses. And if you think about these are very important. They have kind of developed together to let us know whether or not a substance is something that we should savor, eat, you know, enjoy, or it's something to be avoid, avoided. Both of these systems use chemoreceptors, and so they both detect chemical chemicals from the outside world. And in order for these two systems to detect these, uh, in order for these systems to detect changes, they these two or these chemicals have to be dissolved in an aqueous solution. And so, in the nose, this is the chemicals are deserved, dissolved into the nasal fluids like mucus, and in the mouth, they're obviously dissolved into our saliva. So these are very important understandings for how these work. You, you know, it's harder to smell if your nose is dry. There has to be a mucus covering those senses. And this is happening way back up inside your nose, as you can see here. And so let's talk specifically about the uh, the nose and the olfaction. And so here you have the olfactory epithelium. This is the skin cell. This is based on the skin of the inside of the nose. This is where smell or this is where the sensation of smell originates. These nerve endings are down here in this epithelium, and it allows you to take in these chemicals and then perceive them as some sort of odor. All right, and these are unmyelated axons that are just down here. You know, you may have even heard that part of your brain is inside your nose. It's kind of a weird way of understanding it, but I guess that kind of works. All right, and... One interesting thing with the, our sense of smell, I think I have, this is a better understanding of this. And so here you see, this is the, the, the mucus on the outside and you can see these little nerve endings out here and it's taking that into the brain. S smells can be made up of hundreds of different odorants. And we take in these particulates from the air, which are basically just molecules, tiny little molecules. And um, we have different receptors that pick up each one. So this picture shows you here's some sort of odorant. And this is that odorant receptor. We have 350 different odorant receptors. And so just think about that for a minute. Our noses can detect 350 different odors. And we're, we don't really have a very good sense of smell when it comes to the animal kingdom. And so each receptor is unique for that particular odorant and only responds to that particular odorant. Some of those odorants actually are perceived as pain. So have you ever like smelled something and it smelled like hot, if that makes sense, or smelled like cold? You know, like uh, chili peppers are a great example. When you smell them, your nose receives that odorant and your brain says, you know what, probably shouldn't take that because that could hurt. Or like menthol is a great example of something that our, our nose perceives as cold. And it's because it's like keeping us away from it because it could be a painful sensation. And so... In order to smell a substance, that substance has to be volatile. And the word volatile just means reacting. It has to be putting off some sort of odorant, some sort of gaseous odorant that our noses 
can pick up and then dissolve in that liquid. And now this is just showing you, and understand here, you don't have to know about all this business, but the big idea here is what's going to happen when this odorant is received by this odorant receptor? Well, there's look at there, there's a sodium channel. It's going to cause depolarization of that particular cell, and that depolarization is going to send that action potential to the brain. So you need to understand how this can be perceived. The, it's that, that energy, that chemical energy is being received. It's converted then to electrical energy. That electrical energy is sent to particular parts of our brain. Our brain perceives that as whatever the smell is that we just smelled. Taste is very similar to this, except for it is happening on your tongue and these organs called taste buds, which you can kind of see here. There's a whole lot here we're not going to be getting into. You have taste buds actually in your palate and a couple other places, but primarily they are found on the tongue. 10,000 or so of these, uh, 10,000 or so of these taste buds are found on the tongue. And they are found in, they can sense one of five different tastes. And these are, make sense to us. Uh, sweet, salt, bitter, sour, and umami, which is your word for the day. And so sweet, think about, and think about the, the necessity of these um, tastes as far as survival is concerned. Remember we talked earlier very beginning of this unit, survival or sensory and perception are all about survival. And so if I taste something sweet, how is that helping me survive? Well, sweet is calories, right? Sweet is energy. If I taste something salty or umami, these are usually like meat and that sort of thing. So that's again, calories. What about sour or bitter a lot of these tastes are actually put off by other organisms to say, don't eat me, I'm bad. And so we have those tastes also to develop to make sure that we're eating things that are only good for us. There is some evidence to suggest that there's actually a sixth taste receptor called just basically a taste of fat, you know, the, which that would make sense because we like fat because, again, high calories equals survival. And so taste, just like smell, has this kind of homeostatic value to it because, uh, again, we want to take in things that are beneficial to us and we don't want to take things in that are not. And so the same sort of thing is happening here. You can see here there's a taste bud and it's connected to some nerves. Those chemicals come in this taste bud, causes that nerve trigger and action potential senses to the brain. The brain perceives it as a particular kind of taste. And then our brain may even attach other sorts of things to it, like mm, grilled hamburgers. That makes me think of summertime. And, you know, well, your tongue doesn't know that. And there's so you need to think about it that way too. You know, when we when we perceive something, there's all these other things that can oftentimes get attached to those sensations, particularly of smell and taste. 